I'm, I, it's on. It's on, Henry. I, it, it's, I see the needle going. I don't know if it's up high enough, though. Um, let's see if we can find where the control is on the All right, now we should be getting something. So, what do you? Yeah, I think it is. What are you watching, Henry? Sidney uh, Poitier and James Garner and Duel at Jacksonville. All right, let's see how it goes. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, go. Uh, are we recording? Yeah, go ahead and say something. Yeah, just forget about this. Are oh, you just talking about kicking what now? What you kicking talking? a damn refrigerator? Oh, oh, yeah. Refrigerator. Yeah, you, that uh, when you mentioned kicking that, it kind of reminded me. <clears throat> I'm a little bit hoarse. When I was on the road with Merle back there in Nashville, and uh, about three o'clock in the morning, uh, <clears throat> I got up and walked down the lobby looking around. I looked down the <coughs> Excuse me, down the <coughs> where they parked the buses. Mm -hmm. Johnny Paycheck always had his sitting there up on on blocks. <laughs> 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 so anyway, I, I saw a light in one of Merle's buses, and I walked down there, <coughs> and it was Louie and Fuzzy. You know how comical Louie is. Oh, yeah. A couple of the great big speakers in the bus. One of them had quit working. And they'd been working on it all night. Louis about half stoned, you know. Do we tally? Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so I walked there at the door. They had it open. Stood there. And Fuzzy, you know how serious he is. He worked on it and worked on it and worked on it. Couldn't get it to working. So finally Louis, finally Louis <clears throat> he grinned real big. You know, his mouth looked like a square box when he yeah. grinned, you know. <laughs> He picked that speaker up, <clears throat> believe me, he picked that speaker up and he held it up over his head and fuzzy there begging him not to, <laughs> oh, Louis, I got $400, man, don't do that, don't let Louis, finally he come down to all of his might and bounced it right on the floor of the bus, there, you know, <clears throat> and he took it up, picked it up. Put it up in place and hooked it in. It worked perfectly. <laughs> they have been working on it all night. They were done and they just need a little kick. Yeah. I really need it. You can earn it. <laughs> it woke everybody up on the bus that had been on their sleep. Oh, yeah. And then he picked it up and handed the fuzz and he hooked it back up and it worked perfect. Jeez, right. Never did quit all the time I was with him. Yeah. And then right. I knew it was something else. Oh, he, word, he, fixed he was a character. Yeah, yeah. you're right. I remember it. <clears throat> well, you probably remember too, but when they had that little studio behind Lewis's house, oh yeah, uh, in the garage, you know, was that the original that Tally Studios? Or? Yeah, okay. old Tally Studios, and uh, so we'd be <clears throat> Roy and all of us would be recording, and you know that's back when it'd take about 13 hours to cut one song. Mm -hmm. Bring the shave again. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, so in between. Times that they'd take that thing down, we'd all get in a crap game out there in the studio. Yeah, I remember them. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it would, I guess it would take us, I remember one time it took 13 hours to cut one song with Wally Lewis. Wally? Mm hmm. Well, we'd get over right after we got off work. We'd go over there and get off work quarter two. We'd take off yeah. the studio. You know, stay yeah, there left And it'd be after daylight. Every time before we get out of there. Yeah. Merle, you know, Merle, when he got out, why well, he started coming over there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that was when I met Merle. Was, I'd seen him on her show a couple of times. Yeah. And I, <clears throat> he was over there. He wasn't recording or anything. You know, that's before he recorded. Uh, when, what year are you talking about? 50. God. Uh, must have been 58 or 67. 60s. Uh, uh, right yeah. in there somewhere. Yeah. I gave him number. So. I can't remember. Them years get away from well, Was it before or after you, you went to prison? Was it, was it? Oh, he just got out. Oh, just got out. That's probably about 16. Well, we now. was recording over there before you got yeah. out. Yeah, before you got out. Yeah, we're doing a lot of picking over there. <laughs> yeah. Louis said, You guys want to do a lesson? I said, No. <laughs> <laughs> do you 
uh, maybe I shouldn't tell this on tape. <laughs> I don't know whether Henry, I guess Henry remembered this, but you know they had that echo chamber in the bathroom. Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Good echo chamber. And old Louie and Fuzzy, when some girl would go in there to use the restroom, they'd turn that thing wide open. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> you know, you know how things echo. Yeah. And boy, I'm telling you, you could hear that thing from downtown. <laughs> and then they rock and they just come out walking. <laughs> <laughs> that happen? Uh, okay. I don't know. I don't think they ever found out. I don't know. <laughs> well, I they, didn't tell them. <laughs> I didn't. Either. They'd pull anything back. Could <laughs> have had a lot of fun. Yeah. Back then, we all did. Yeah. You don't have to worry about drunk driving. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. The cop stopped me there one time. I went and started around the corner and it stopped down there. And I knew it was there. <laughs> but I, they wasn't nothing coming, no way. You know. <clears throat> so I just went ahead and rolled around the corner and heard, here you go. He said, didn't you see that stop sign? I said, yes, I saw it. Uh -huh. I said, but there wasn't nothing coming. <laughs> I said him. no. I said no. I said no. I didn't see it, but I knew it was there. That's what I said. Yeah. He said, "Well, you should have stopped." He gave me, you know, he wrote me a ticket for that. You know, I got a t I went down. <clears throat> I drove to uh, San Diego to see uh, uh, my wife's parents. Her dad was in the Navy, you know, uh -huh. thirty years, and he just got out. And, uh, so. <clears throat> It's about one o'clock in the morning. We pulled down that little town. It's right out of San Diego, and I pulled up to a stop sign and just almost stopped. It just eased right on through it, you know. And I looked over here, and here was a, a police department right there on the corner. I didn't see no cop, but I went on a couple of blocks, and got stopped, and got a ticket for running the stop sign. And did you know <clears throat> that they mailed me that? Uh, no, they didn't. They gave me a ticket, and it was due on a certain date. So I started calling, uh, wanting to know how much to pay it. You can't pay it. you got to come down here, uh -huh. 250 miles from here. Jeez. And this went on, went on. I called court. I called everywhere, and I had to go down there. I, drove, I had to take all the family, drove 250 miles down there, mm -hmm. stayed in court about 30 minutes, and drove all the way back. And the damn ticket cost me eleven dollars. <laughs> you change all that now. Oh man, oh, man. eleven dollars—that's yeah. five hundred miles. Five hundred miles. Sheep. It's either that or get a warrant, you know. Oh yeah, they put a rest room on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then you would be. Able to. They've changed that since then because I, I know I talked to two or three that that uh, can mail it in now. You know? Oh yeah. But they no way, man. You had to appear in person. Margaret Ann got one in Utah a couple years ago. We was coming back to Colorado. She got that. The guy said you can mail it in. There wasn't no sweat on that at all. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, this, you know, this has been, geez, 25 yeah, what, probably years before ago. the freeway was down there, right? Long down ago. Yeah, this Coast Highway was the only way. I don't know what. Uh, <clears throat> it must have been that they had a rule everybody from out of town. I don't know. Yeah. Uh -huh. But boy, I tried. Every, I, I spent. I don't know how much long distance calls. It didn't <laughs> do no good. No good. Yeah. Um, Bill, I wanted to ask you uh, to get back to the interview a little bit. Um, first off, uh, where where were you born and when? I was born in uh, Denison, Texas. I, mean, I thought it was Texas, yeah. D-E-N-I-S-O-N, Denison, okay. Texas. That's nine miles from where Buck was born, Sherman. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Eisenhower was born in Denison, too. Really? Yeah. Big boys out doing some right. <laughs> uh, I don't know what, how popular he was, <laughs> but I didn't. Even, I didn't know Buffett from Denison until a long time after. You went to work for his boys. Uh -huh. what, you want to tell me what year, if you don't want to? It's uh, okay. 1924, May the 12th. You don't have to publicize yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, just, um, four, he's three years, three years older than me. <laughs> um, oh man. I didn't know you was that old. I'm 68. I didn't know that. Uh. Every damn day. <laughs> um, what, who were your musical influences growing up? Well, <clears throat> that's a kind of a long story too. My my dad uh, <clears throat> was during depression. He had a little restaurant down there. Uh, this was after we moved to Longview, Texas, down East Texas, <clears throat> and. Uh, 
there's a couple of guys came out of, uh, I believe it was Burnett, Texas. Burnett. Burnett. I believe it was. And uh, they was having a medicine, they had medicine shows back there. I was too young. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, so one of them played a mandolin, and the other one blew a jug to make it sound like a bass fiddle. Wow. And uh, <clears throat> so my dad, uh, they they leased this vacant lot from my dad to put on this medicine show. And so he entered these, these young guys. They, they weren't teenagers. They were over 21. So uh, he got them on that medicine show, and they won. And so my dad... <clears throat> made them a job, you know, for the room and board and stuff to have them in the thing. And uh, their, their name was uh, Bob and Joe Shelton. Shelton Brothers. Sunshine Boys, they went as. I got some of their records still. And so then they went. They uh, My dad and them running around together. My dad's pretty wild back then before he joined the church. And they'd go on these fishing trips and all that. And uh, so then later on, they uh, took on another piece or two in their band. They moved to Shreveport, Louisiana, which was uh, 60 miles from Longview. And that's where uh, later on, years later, is where uh, Hank Williams and Johnny Horton, Farron Young, Webb Pierce, and, and Elvis made his first appearance there. Louisiana Hayride, yeah. What was that, K? Uh, <clears throat> What is it? I can't think of the call. I can it. probably find it out. It's a well, I know it's well as I know my name, but uh, anyway, it was uh, the what, what was the name of the show that came out of there? Uh, big show that they was all on uh, years later. The only one I know is Louisiana Hayride. That's right, Louisiana Hayride. Right. Uh, <clears throat> Larry Scott, a good friend of mine, is, is on there at night now. And anyway, they went over and got them early morning show. And so they took off, you know, their popularity grew. And of course, you could get the station everywhere, you know. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so they'd come through town. They played school, schoolhouses was the thing back then. Yeah. They didn't have things like auditoriums. And, uh -huh stuff like that. They played schoolhouses and then out in front of drive-ins, beer joints and stuff like that. And uh, they got real popular so they signed with OK Records. That was before they called it Columbia. Uh -huh. And they had a lot of hits uh, on Columbia. Hang out the front door key and about seven, seven years with the wrong woman. And so I I took a liking to music, yeah. you know, and they was a big influence on me. But the biggest influence that really got me going was uh, later on we lived in a what they called a tent camp because it's an oil boom town. You couldn't only find a place to live, you know, and they had what they called tent camps. And uh, <clears throat> if you had a tent with a wood floor in it, you was living high, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so next door to us, I was, when I got my guitar, I was 12 years old, and this must have been, I was, I guess I was still 12 or 13, but anyway, next to us uh, lived some Mexican people, and uh, it was a family, and they had a, a Mexican band, and you know, that Mexican music was real close to them. A little bit in country music then, <clears throat> and uh, so I'd laid my guitar down. I wouldn't put my mother could play guitar and chord and piano, and I wouldn't take no interest. So I went over to listen to them for a while and asked them, could I come over and sit in with them? Because I couldn't play. You know? So I started going over there and and. Uh, Learned a bunch of them Mexican songs. Back then was uh, Rancho Grande and the Cucaracha and a bunch of that kind of stuff. And so I got interested again, and, and they was a big influence because I always did love that type of music. You know? 
that's uh, uh, because it's kind of music. This what's this girl's name? It just got killed recently. That was a real pop of Mexican singer. Oh, Selena. Selena. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it was that type of music. They yeah. called it. Uh, <clears throat> Not Cheryl or something. Or? Uh, I forget. Anyway. <clears throat> it's a type they play down in Texas, huh. where they have the trumpets, twin trumpets, and the uh, accordion, huh. stuff like that. And so uh, that got me interested. And then my dad joined the church and started preaching, and I started playing in the church. Huh. And uh, I never did. I didn't play any dancers or anything like that because their religion was against movies and that kind of stuff, you know. We came out to, <clears throat> after we came out to, uh, you want to turn that off? Yeah, actually, but keep going. Just, just flip that switch. So, uh, last one on the right there. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> I didn't play any any music in the halls or anything until I came out here. But we moved out to California, and uh, <clears throat> then I went back to high school. We moved on to Visalia, and I went on up north, and I started working for Kaiser or Permanent Metals Corporation, which is a uh, bowler maker. Mm -hmm. In Fontana or, or no, up in Oakland? Richmond. Richmond, yeah. <clears throat> And uh, then we started uh, playing. Uh, they had what they call uh, bond drive programs, mm -hmm. Civil War bonds, you know. And uh, uh, so I started. They'd let us off the shipyard where we were. Would let us off, and we, they had three shipyards. We'd go to one, two, and three, and play a show once in a while, once a week or so. We had uh, Lana Turner. Did shows with us, Victor Mature, a lot of the old stars like uh, uh, Charlie Starrett, Charles Starrett, and a bunch mm -hmm. of them, you know. And so then I started playing uh, uh, Saturday nights <clears throat> out at a place called Maple Hall in Richmond. And then I uh, organized my own group. But this is after I'd worked in the shipyards about two years, you know. Uh, it's just a long story. This yeah. could go on for a whole yeah. book, but I'd rather you just ask me. Okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> what, oh, why do you love music? What about it? What attracted you to it? Or why do you, why did you stay in it? You, I mean, why did I stay in it? Yeah, why do you love it? Well, I guess it's just... Uh, I just always... I always have liked music. <clears throat> it's on my mother's side, my... My mother's brother, uh, he went by Tex Moore, but his name was Bonnie Moore. And he uh, <clears throat> he rode out here long before we came out here on a freight train. His wife and a little, just a baby daughter, rode a freight train out here. And they came to Arvin. <clears throat> and uh, he played... He was a good musician. He played a four-string guitar. Mm -hmm. And they had a, a, between 32 and 34, they had a, a radio show on KM, PMC, which is KNZR now. Mm -hmm. And I was on it years later. This is way after. We didn't come out here until 1940. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like I say, on my... My dad never played anything but tambourine, but he knew the words to all them old Jimmy Rogers songs and all that stuff. And, and uh, when I was a kid, you know, wherever I started playing music, <clears throat> he'd sat out on the porch with us and sang. He knew the words to all them songs, all them old songs, Jimmy Rogers songs, and him. Uh, and so anyway. Uh, I did uh, uh, a lot of playing everywhere, and then 
Northern California. The guy by the name of Elwin Cross gave me my first job at a band. Mm -hmm. Up there, up the one up there. Mm -hmm. Steady job at a band called the Arizona Wranglers. And uh, uh, another friend of mine that later came to Bakersfield and had a TV show with the name of Dave Stogger mm -hmm. joined this same band that I, that I played in, first band. And another, you remember Lavinia Lee? Oh, yeah. Okay, she was singing in that band. Probably not. That's way back there. Is Arizona Wrangler? <laughs> yeah. Probably that good. I got some. She's that old. <laughs> oh yeah, she's older than I. Oh yeah, you know what her nerve did. Yeah. <laughs> well, you knew she got killed, didn't you? No. Oh, you didn't? I didn't know that. Yeah, a couple of years ago, she married this young guy working oil field. Yeah. And her and one of her daughters and him, they had a motor on. This couple, of three years ago. <clears throat> and, uh, so they're driving up north on their. Vacation, I guess it was, and uh, uh, he lost control on a curb that motor home, and it running off a not a steep hill, but it turned upside down and exploded, caught on fire. Oh man! Killed. Oh yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. When did you come to Bakersfield? I uh, came to Bakersfield and uh, I believe, well, I came, see, Arvin's like 20 miles out here. Right. And your but, cousin was there? Your, your yeah, well, I lived there for a while, too, see. I drove a truck for Kovakovich, hauling grapes and stuff. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's before we went on down to Visalia and then up north. Oh. And uh, I came... Uh, I came to Bakersfield, I believe, forty-five, nineteen forty-five. All the time I was in Arvin, I only came to Bakersfield once. They had streetcars in East Bakersfield. Yeah. The streetcars would run over Nineteenth Street, mm -hmm. just right, just like San Francisco. Oh, yeah, they, <laughs> that's before they red car. Yeah, they call uh, it the red car. Or the street cars. Yeah, yeah you, you know the rail run down the middle of the street with electric yeah, dealer. Yeah. yeah, and uh, <clears throat> so I came to Bakersfield one day. The only time I ever came to Bakersfield uh, uh, before this was in about 1941. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I came in from Arvin, and I was walking down 19th Street. And there's some guy standing there with a guitar on the corner. They called the Blind Troubadour. And naturally, I walked up and listened to him, got to talk to him, you know. <clears throat> and uh, his name, his real name, I asked him what his real name was. He said, uh, Leon Payne. Wow. <clears throat> the guy who wrote Santa. Yeah, he wrote all, those all songs. Hits. Yeah. Oh, geez, he's a great writer. And the next time I saw him was in... Uh, <clears throat> I went on up north and everything. Uh, I was on tour with Tommy Duncan mm -hmm. in '49. Wow! And uh, we played uh, Houston, Texas, a place called the Hold Down Club. Mm -hmm. And I met and everybody in the business, Floyd Tillman, nearly all of them. And Leon Payne was there, and that's after he had written uh, oh, what was those songs? That hits? Oh, he had uh, wrote all I kinds of. There's one about a honky tonk where the where losing yeah, one wife's race. And no, Joe Mavis wrote that. Yeah, all right. Uh, I'll give you that. Brian and uh, uh, oh man, I know Hunter has songs, but I can't oh, think yeah, of them now. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> he gave me a, he had a picture. I gave him, uh, he gave me a picture. I don't have it. I lost it somewhere. Was Leon Payne from here or just traveling through? I never did ask him where he was from. It wasn't originally. He wasn't from here, was he? I don't know. I would say probably Oklahoma or somewhere back there in Texas. And uh, Texas probably because that's where he landed. Went back home. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, then, uh, well, I left there and I came back to Fresno and Later her out the barn there. That's where I met her eventually. Just got out of the Navy. Cousin her. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and 
he had never been to Bakersfield, and uh, he was working in a little bitty old hole in the wall music store there for a friend of mine. And uh, he's living with his uncle. His name is Odell Cagle. He's a preacher. And Herb never had played anything but gospel music in that full chord and stuff. And uh, <clears throat> I had a band playing on Saturday nights out at the barn. And uh, he wanted me to teach him how to play that honky tonk stuff. <laughs> so I just showed him a couple of deals. It wasn't hard because he could play piano already. Mm -hmm. And so he started playing with me out there on Saturday nights, and then he moved to Bakersfield. This is way before he ever moved to Bakersfield, before he ever got married or anything. <clears throat> and, uh, oh, it's a long, long story. Yeah. Anyway, we started our, skipping the concert, we started our TV show, and uh, I believe it was 51. Jimmy Thomason had been on about two or three weeks on Channel 29. He had the first TV show. Yeah. And Jimmy came to town. <clears throat> He'd been in Governor Jimmy Davis's band, which I joined later. <laughs> and uh, He's still alive, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he was yeah, he's 90-something. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so uh, <clears throat> Jimmy... I never met Jimmy, but I was very familiar with Jimmy Davis music mm -hmm. and stuff. So I was playing the Clover Club then, <clears throat> and uh, so he walked up to the bandstand and introduced himself. When he told me to play with Jimmy Davis, I knew he was all right, you know. So I asked him to come up and do some numbers, and he said, you know what? Said I've been all over town and said these guys act like I'm trying to steal their job. Nobody <laughs> would ask him on the bandstand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason I. Hey, what's going on, brother? Good to see you. That's the reason I say a lot of times. That, that, that's, that's my oldest boy. That's the reason I say a lot of times, tell him go see Henry, because Henry's only about the only guy to let anybody get up and sing, you know, <laughs> like we used to. I learned it. And anyway, Everybody Jimmy. But me, he wouldn't let me get up there. I don't really let me can let you be in there either. <laughs> he was Not always no too. <laughs> <laughs> he was always too young when we was playing, when I was playing. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, I believe in giving everybody a chance, like you always did. You know? Yeah, if they could whistle and people like it, pull them up there, man. <laughs> I remember getting there one time, this little boy come up there, like the same song. Bill said, Okay, oh, it's a blackboard. He said, Well, come on up. He got up there, and Bill asked the old boy, says, What key do you do this at? This old boy said, Oh, G or G7, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I like to fell off in the Well, they, those guys was lucky that we could usually get the right key for them. Yeah. I've seen so many guys get on the bandstand since then, and, and the band has no idea what key they're yeah. singing in. Oh, we just jumped with the band. I said, give me a B flat. And yeah. I go up or down from there. You know? Yeah. You know what I, I do? I don't know all my keys playing drums. <clears> you know, you don't ever I usually ask them what song they're going to sing, and then I... You figure right. out where the highest key was. Yeah. The highest key or the lowest key. Yeah. And I'd have him hit it. And then get that right with us. But I we back so many people that we got used to it. Oh, yeah. I hate to embarrass anybody, you know. Oh, I do too. Yeah. Uh, that was right. So you, in 1951, you started Cousin Herb's television show. Yeah, Trading Post Cat. Trading Post what? Gang. Gang? Okay. And that's Trade post show the And that was the picture with, with Fuzzy and, and all that. Yeah, yeah, Bonnie yeah, and Nashville. Yeah, yeah. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the people who were in Bakersfield at that time and and um well, I've got pictures uh Henry had there was some uh, there was quite a few in Bakersfield before that time that wasn't on her show but yeah. Uh, the main ones that recorded later and stuff like that was in the town of that time. Bonnie, Fuzzy, Bonnie and Fuzzy. That's before Merle. Yeah, Cliff Crawford. Uh, yeah, that, that's one that I keep forgetting. Billy Mize. With Billy Mize, Cliff Crawford. Uh, Louis, of course. Louis Talley, Roy Nichols. Roy Nichols. John Johnny Joviello, but he left, you know, he yeah. took his place. Yeah. 
and uh, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. Lazy, but he's good. <laughs> <laughs> he was lazy, wasn't he? Yeah, he's, he's doing real great now. Oh, I know it. Did you see him on that PTL here about no, three weeks ago? Sure There's millions of listeners on that thing, and they had him on there two days in a row singing his dad's old yeah. hits. Albert E. Senior. Yeah, I'll fly away. Oh, he, he's the one that did uh, Rank Stranger. I can't remember what he did. Well, it. Yeah. it was an Al Brumley that did a song called Rank Stranger. Well, it's him. Yeah. Might have been, yeah. I've got his, he sent me some of his albums that might be on there. Um, okay. Oh, they're just, man, I could I could fill that page up with the <laughs> guys that's been here. Uh, well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you these questions, then we're going to go back yeah. and start talking about the people. Um, what instruments did you play, and, and what did you like about each one? Well, uh, <clears throat> when uh, Buck played with me, he played guitar. You, you had a band before. Buck joined your band, is that right? Yeah, at the Blackboard. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, when Buck played, he played lead guitar, so I played steel. And then uh, when Billy Mize played with me, he played steel, and so I double on lead. Mm -hmm. And once in a great while, I'd do a short fiddle out. Just, you know, enough and to get by on. Just enough to get by on. But the main instrument I never did like to play is the one that I made the most money on, is piano. Mm. <laughs> you know, I, I only played steel guitar on one session for MGM. Yeah. I played bass on several sessions, but the one that I <coughs> played on the most sessions was piano. I hated it. Yeah. I just hated it. Why did you hate it? I just... I, I don't know. I just didn't like it. Yeah. I like to hear somebody play it like George Fred, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I just, I just, uh, I like standard guitar better. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Cousin. Let me ask you about people, but. Do that last. Um, Bonnie Owen was on her show too. Right. Um, let's see. On, on Cousin Herb's show, what was it? Like, what was a typical show like? Was it an hour show or half? I know it was on every night. It's 40, minutes, 40, minutes. 45 minutes. 45 minutes. minutes. Yeah. <coughs> it was what, on 10 years. What was it? What was it? So it's 51 to 61. Would that be right? Or 60? It's right in there somewhere. Yeah, it was ran 10 years live so, every day. Well, we it was a little better 10 because we. Uh, We've got a 10th anniversary album that Capitol came down and cut huh. in the auditorium. Glenn Campbell was on it with us. Wow. Roy Clark. Huh. What was it? What was the show like? Would you you would have you had a house band and you had guests come in and, and things like that? Is that? <clears throat> yeah, the Blackboard. Uh, uh, I'd booked the guests and the Blackboard paid them, huh. but in their contract they had to come by and appear on like the Blackboard. Trading Post show. And announced that they would be at the blackboard that night. Okay. See, we had all, everybody in the business just about. Yeah. Didn't we? Sure we did. On Monday and Tuesday night, Tuesday. Wasn't it Monday and Tuesday night? Or? Uh, the guest stars on Wednesday. That's right, yeah. Did, did Hank Williams ever come through? Or he, didn't get uh, he came to. Were you there when he no, came by the I blackboard? Uh, he never did appear with us. Yeah. But a guy by the name of Marty Landau I used to book through him. Uh, mm -hmm. And. Uh, so he came by a couple of times and brought Hank with him. Yeah. Uh, Hank would be booked on the West Coast, and uh, he would bring him in like we'd have a Sunday afternoon jam session, uh -huh. and they'd come in and sit in the other room out there. I never would call them up because, you know, yeah. I didn't want to embarrass them or anything. But uh, I got to know Hank pretty well. And, uh, He's quite a character. Right? <laughs> I never met him. Yeah. Uh, he's uh, He'd always tell me about the new songs he had kept. And, uh, yeah, we're talking about, talking about Hank. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I was talking about he'd come to Blackboard, and you know, jukebox was a big thing. You know, he always had, he had four or five or six records on every jukebox. 
And then I, uh, there's several on there. I could pick out several, three or four that I played on with different artists. You know? So anyway, me and him would go up to the jukebox. This happened two different times. And he had, uh, I remember one song called When the Shop. Mm-hmm. You remember that? Yeah. Uh, and when Hank, he never would sing a song to you when he was telling you about his new release. He'd get right up in your face and he'd, he'd just recite the words. <laughs> the words. It, he's a smart man because lyrics is, is the foundation of any song. You know? And he'd, after you get through it, say, How you like them bear lyrics? Bill? Them bear lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> How you like them bear lyrics? But he was quite a guy. I fixed him up with that man. You remember him, man? Really? Found that man. That means you tried to fix me up with it? <laughs> well, I finally. Same old girl. <laughs> she came by here to see me about six months ago. She went back to Oklahoma. Yeah. She married some old boy and they had a club. And they was in a fight one night, him and him. So she locked the front door of the club on it. And he tried to kick it in. She shot him with a shotgun through the door. <laughs> <laughs> It, it it just made him mad. It didn't kill him. <laughs> Boy, she's about one of the best waitresses I ever saw. I'll be again. What you So he drove, Nellie was out to visit him, and she, he drove her by. And I was standing there talking to him at the car. He, she was, I noticed some woman sitting over there, but I didn't notice who it was. It wasn't blonde headed. And, and uh, he was talking. I said, I said, when's the last time you heard from Nellie? He said, well, this is her here. And I said, oh, Nellie, how you doing? I couldn't <laughs> say, well, Matt, I didn't notice you. Seems <laughs> like she's blonde, real. Like the plate, but you, yeah, yeah, okay. I yeah, 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 and then uh, Buck hired him uh, for the Bakersfield Brass. Wasn't that what they called him? Yeah. And then he went with Merle. He's still with Merle. Cliff mm-hmm. Crawford, when I hired him, he was a trumpet player. He teamed up with Billy Myers later. Tell me uh, uh, a little bit about the, well, there's the, the Joan Macon song, of Dim Lights. Uh, loud, loud music. Yeah. yeah. Uh, tell me about what on a on a big night. What the what was the, the blackboard like? Oh. <laughs> wow. 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 Like what? Well, you just figure out about the wildest club you ever been in and multiply it, and then yeah. we had tater pickers, farm workers, uh, wine rooms, <laughs> attorneys, telephone operators, everybody. Everybody came. Everybody. It was the, the place in town. Well, actually, yeah. Well, it was. Uh, it had a reputation, but they people didn't care. And they came out to see the action. We, we even had a big floodlight that hit the middle of the board. When they started a big fight, I'd reach that. Big the ladder. Frank? Frank was the bouncer? Yeah, he was the only one. Yeah, one, one day, one Sunday, though. Frank was real good nature. He had. Uh, <clears throat> some old gal, he's walked out the back door to quieten some old gal and somebody else said, she just 
about every other step she started kicking him in the ass. Went all, <laughs> went all the way around the black and kicked him in the butt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that revolution is not good. Yeah. Do you know what I was Paul Barrett is? Do you know? I, I was Paul Barrett. I'll win. I'm good for that. Did you? He was a good guy. Though. Man, that Joe of I hated him. I didn't, I didn't hate him. But we got a long back for water, man. He was great, man. I, I never did have I never did have problems with anybody or or you know club or anything. And really they're not have problems with him. He was just an asshole. You know, just natural born asshole. Excuse my language. And anyway, we we had some good times. How many people would it hold there? Well they enlarged it a couple of times. I don't know, what would he, about 600, what it wrote all the way up? Yes. It's big, big. Well, Joe, what are you writing about? Everybody smokes, Jim. Yeah. Oh, everybody smokes. Everybody smokes one step. Yeah. And the last book was Jim. And of course, the music was down by Yeah. It had to be to get over the bed. Yeah. Yeah. So was it more, it was more dancing and drinking? Oh, it was dancing, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bakersfield was a dance. Yeah, the best yeah. damn dance going down, didn't it? Yeah. Who did? That plastic stuff and everything. Yeah. Then he had a, a had sliding doors. He could bite it, face in half, like it was a real slow night. Yeah. And close yeah. Down. See the, the people a little closer together, it uh, creates a more of an atmosphere. Yeah. You get one over here, one about twenty yards over there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What the. Uh, um, who, who were, I'm going to get back to this. Who were some of the musicians you played with before the Blackboard and some that you played with when you were at the Blackboard? You mentioned Tommy Duncan and two of the other guys. Well, that was later on. Uh, <clears throat> a little way back there, uh, uh, when I was in Vegas, I played uh, with a, a real great club singer by the name of Tex Marshall. <clears throat> and then uh, we played a lot. Uh, you remember a guy by the name of Hoot Gibson? Sure. The old, Western. old Western. movie star. Yeah. 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 Okay, we played for him quite a bit. After we would play, uh, the place was called the Saddle Club then, but it's got a different name now. Uh, what is it? Uh, in, in, in around here? Right. Uh, right. Uh, and, uh, we would play from nine to three, and then we'd go out to Hoot's place. He had a place on a strip called D4C Ranch. <laughs> That's a D great place. D4 what? D4C. 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 He had an airport and horse, <laughs> horseback rides and all that stuff. Yeah. And uh, this was like Hoot Getty. It had to be late in 40. About 45. Yeah. 49, 40. I came back here in forty five I came back here. So that had to be forty late. While I was out there about a year and a half, two years. Is in the forties, yeah, mid forties. <coughs> and uh So, you know, naturally, while we was in Las Vegas, we played a lot of the big movie stars that come out there roaring and sing with us and uh, play with spoons and all that kind of big spoon fan into that. There's an orchestra. Oh, yeah. I've seen Cajun do it. They do it. Yeah. Anyway, we. How about during this time, though, I played uh, with uh, uh, Christian Mature, Lana Kennedy, Charles Skagg, uh, Sam Somerville. You may not even remember some of these guys. They yeah, were stars. He played that uh, Hutton, she played yeah. Mary Hutton. Uh, Uh, 
Jimmy Rogers, uh, here in Longview, the Blue Goldberg. Yeah, he uh, he was appearing in Longview. Uh, he was appearing in Longview, and, and every time they come in, people like that, they uh, the courthouse lawn back on the, you know, that's set on the courthouse steps, and then there's a lawn out there where all drunkards and the people that you know went around to see the show. <clears throat> And he took us, me and my oldest sister, she's 18 months younger than me, to hear him sing. And you know, microphones, uh, he was a microphone. But I remember it just like it was yesterday. Uh, he was sitting on a, a big pillar type step, and it was about, well, it was farther. We always parked the curb, sat in the car. It's more than that house over there. And it's people all over the place, sitting around on the lawn with their lunch and everything. He was singing with his guitar, Jimmy Rogers, and his voice was just as clear as as if he was on a microphone. He said, hmm. "Only time I ever saw Jimmy Rogers." But my dad knew all of his songs. He knew them all by heart. He never could play this. And then another <clears throat> time there, Longview, I live just like that. Uh, <clears throat> when Bonnie and Clyde got to the uh, they, uh, he heard it uh, from the towing company that they was towing their car into a garage at Longview. So he got us kids, uh, me and my sister took us down there, and we saw the car still had all the uh, you know, guys, uh, everything, all up the seat frames. Uh, I remember like it was yesterday. Had about a hundred holes, bullet holes in the driver's side, out the other side. Wasn't a one shot deal. No, <laughs> well, man. No. You got thirty five four guys, wasn't it? Yeah, a bunch of hit in the bushes, uh, and stuff like that. He, uh, he always, uh, anything happening, he'd see it. We got to go. And that was uh, way back then. Uh, during that time, I, I left home when I was about 15. to join the band in Longview, Texas. Mm -hmm. With the, uh, uh, a couple of girls had a show on there called the Ozark Sweethearts. And uh, I played, <coughs> me and a kid of the name of Johnny Porter. He played, you remember the old Red Foley show out of Missouri? Uh, Springfield, yeah. Yeah. Okay, the, one of the fiddle players was Johnny Porter. Oh, was he? When, when he was about 12 years old, 13, me and him played music together. Oh, yeah. And he was going all over uh, around the little towns and there. He went in contests. He could play. <laughs> he could play listen to the Balkan Birds. You could almost see it. He's birds, yeah. And, and I never saw him since then, but I saw him on TV. Mm -hmm. The Red Bully Show. No, they called his name. Uh, what made me take notion of uh, was they, they called his name one time. And I hadn't noticed the musicians were several fiddle players in there. And uh, <coughs> he was on the show. Old Bill Wimbley, he had a hell of a band on that show. Oh, you yeah. Remember Bill Wimbley? I didn't know it first. His band on that show. Yeah. yeah. I know they uh, It was a good show. Who all did you play with? Well, I know I got I think you played with about everybody in the in the, in the, in the, in the country in the country field. 
Uh, well, Ellen Cross and Arizona Wranglers. Uh, Bill Wood and Orange Blossom Playboys. Yeah, <laughs> it was the Orange Blossom Playboys. Hey, is that coffee? That was our band name. Oh, uh, and uh, and then I played with the uh, Governor Jimmy Davis, Sunshine Boys. Mm -hmm. Was that in Palm Springs? Palm Springs. Tommy. Uh, Tommy Duncan. Uh, Jimmy Thompson's TV show. Cousin of Trading Post show. Dave Stogner. Uh, Dave Stogner. And uh, then I traveled with Merle. And I don't know. Just a bunch then, of bands that nobody would recognize, you know. Right. Yeah. But then you backed everybody too, a lot of people, almost everybody in the industry. Well, yeah, then yeah. we'd go, uh, they'd have a, a artist come in to record, like Johnny Bond or yeah. Carl Smith and Louie and out from Nashville. Then they'd call some of us from here to go down and play in the set. Is Ken Nelson? Or Ken yeah, Ken. Ken. And but I recorded. Is Cliffy still involved in this too, or is that uh, me and Cliffy and Speedy West and Jimmy Bryant used to uh, be the house band? Uh, wow. Uh, I can't believe it. Wow. And Cliffy, Cliffy's the one that uh, hit it. Okay. And he got me all it. But then that was when the <coughs> the record companies was recording out here. Right. That's before they moved the recording studios to Nashville. So you, they were, you, they were called, you go into Los Angeles and record Capitol Records and, yeah. then, and then come back. Yeah. Uh, they'd call me and, and I'd get Fuzzy and Louie and uh, Roy Nichols, uh, Jenna Sanders, whoever yeah. around here, down there. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> then Ferlin Husky, uh -huh. I brought him to town. Well, he was originally from Missouri, is that right? And then, but he moved here for... Well, I met him when I was on the road with Tommy Duncan, <clears throat> and uh, I brought him to Bakersfield and got him a radio show and helped him sell his time. You know. And so then he was here about three years, and uh, we recorded with him, Dear John Ladder and uh, Jimmy Shepard, Jimmy Shepard, uh, uh, my band back there, on well, a song I picked for a satisfied time. And uh, that was, during that time, was Bakersfield Sound. Was, that was the beginning of it, or that was it? it, it uh, no, it went on, Bakersfield Sound went on <coughs> several years ago. Well, when, when would you say it started, and when would you say it finished? Uh, I would say, <coughs> I'd like to make this feel sound lasted uh, from about 50, 51 to about the late 60s. That's when Buck and Merle came in on the end there. Right. Merle, Buck came in about seven or six or seven years before Merle. Right. So, and so it just, I think the, it was between the, the early 50s I'd say through maybe 60 65. But see, not only did we cut for the major, but we was putting out our own records, small labels. That's there's one. Tally uh, Records and who yeah. else? Oh, there's a lot of labels. I had, <coughs> I had uh, uh, a uh, Rose Records, Chris Records, Fire Records. That's some of the local labels. There was 78 to start out with, you know? uh -huh. and uh, in talent, 
and several more, and probably probably 15 different labels. Wow. Besides us recording on the majors. Yeah. <clears throat> um, why why do you think there's a, a quotation from Sam Phillips, uh, I mean, and he's just somebody asked him why did the music happen? Why did Sun Records happen in Memphis? And he says, well. Anybody knows when you've got great soil, people are going to work hard, have money, and are going to appreciate the blues in the South. And he says, so any fool could tell you this is going to be a great place to make music. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, is there a reason why Bakersfield happened musically? Well, think? yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the biggest part of your, your uh, clientele was people that work in the fields, like potatoes, swampers, mm -hmm. grapes, swampers, agriculture, and then oil fields, you know. And those type of people, most of them came from back in the Midwest, like Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, Louisiana, and uh, uh, a big, biggest percentage of them like country music. Of course, back then they called it Western, and then they mm -hmm. started to call it country. Mm -hmm. See, there's been guys in and out of here, like the Sons of Pioneer, all them guys have been in and out of here. You know, Spade Cooley, Roy Rogers, you name them. They've been, they've lived here. They don't mm -hmm. work here in the fields. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Gene Autry's dad, I used to pile around with him quite a bit. He was quite a bit older than me, but he was an old cattle buyer, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> I'd, uh, I'd have him down to the club, and me and him get up and sing, you are my sunshine, <laughs> and he always had on, Gene would give him his old suits, you know, thousand dollar suits, and <laughs> he'd wear them out to the catalogs. <laughs> Nudie suits? Yeah. Yeah. His name is Delbert. Delbert Alter. You mentioned the, the uh, I want to backtrack again, the Bakersfield sound. What what was the sound and, and who made it? In, in a, uh, what, what sets it what makes it different from other forms of Western or, or country music? Well, it was just, uh, it wasn't none of this orchestrated uh, pop sound and stuff. It was just, uh, we didn't play from any sheet music or anything. We just, just raw country. That's all I'm yeah. explaining, you know. Fiddle, steel guitar, uh, piano. And uh, it was just, it was just straight, honest country music with a beat. That's all I can say. And that, and that honest, why Why do you think there was that need for the honesty? Or that, was that because the people were real and they, they wanted real music? Yeah. The writers, uh, yeah. nearly all the songs came from here that was, mm -hmm. that was being cut with hits in, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, It, uh, it was busy. Everybody was thinking music, country music, you know. But, uh, were Brian and West, uh, is it Speedy West and Jimmy Brian, is that correct? Yeah. Were they, were they Brian, from? B R Y A N T. Was, were they from here? No. They, were, they, they lived in L.A. LA okay. And they were session musicians that worked at Capitol, right? Uh, and yeah, and they played in clubs and yeah. stuff. Did they would come up here? No, we recorded down there. No, but would they ever come up here too? or? Not too much, once mm -hmm. in a while. Jimmy Bright, uh, mm -hmm. I had them down a couple of times. Yeah. They were so busy down there, they didn't have time to go mm -hmm. anywhere. Oh. Clifford heard. Stone kept them pretty busy. Oh, I see. Actually, I, gotta make, I have to make a note to call Clifford Stone because I want to interview him. Yeah. Um, yeah, Cliffy is. He just recently moved. <clears throat> sold his house and moved. 
close by somewhere. Oh, to here? No, uh, down in, there. In the, in the, okay. Um, the, uh, so the people that played it were the ones you mentioned earlier, the, the, like the real Bakersfield sound, the early sound. Would that be like Fuzzy and Bonnie and, and Fuzzy was on steel, yeah. Yeah. Um, if if you had to pick who a, a core of musicians that, that invented the Bakersfield sound, say starting around fifty one, yeah. Who would those players be? The writers. Uh, I would say uh, you mean the musicians? Yeah. Ran the well, the singers, the musicians, and the writers. Okay, I would say uh, uh, I'd say Tommy Collins, Ferlinowski, Louis Talley, Lloyd Eccles, Fuzzy Owens, Bonnie Owens, Jelly Sanders. Uh, Johnny Caviello, he was, he had just left Wells, Bob Wells, mm -hmm. when I hired him. He was wanted to play drums for Wells. Uh -huh. He had a hit record out called Texas Drummer Boy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then uh, Tommy Hayes, he's a head of Farmer's Insurance here. Uh, let me see. He could probably give you a lot of good information. You can call him at State Farm. Okay. Out here. Henry probably know how to get a hold of him. And uh, Kenny Hayes, he was a singer. But he was in service at that time. But he sang at uh, Yodel and everything like that. Uh, well done. He was well known around yeah. He just died two weeks ago, three. And uh, Jimmy Thomas. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Thomas. Uh, Jack Trent. Uh, Red Simpson. Red went on, had several hits. You know, I'm a truck. Mm -hmm. What's that? Gene Shepard, too. Gene Shepard, yeah. Uh, that's S H U P A R D. Okay, that's the way you spell it. Right, right. I got it for me. And uh, man, it's Billy Mize. Uh, one of the good writers from around here was Buddy Mize. Uh, Henry Sharp, natural. Man, I could just go on and on if I had look. You know, if I had a list. If I, if I had to, like just questions, and then I understand. You know, just like the questions, then I could fill in the answers, right. and mail them back to you. Right. That's that's that's, what, that's gonna take me a while. This is my first one I've done. It's so. a lot easier to. Uh, right. I understand. What you're to do it that way. Um. What was the uh, uh the your, well, your philosophy it seems to be to give everybody a, a chance and to encourage new talent and, um, and and let people show what they could do. How did how did you come by that, or why did you do it? Well, I guess uh, more or less got that from my dad. He was always uh, <coughs> wanting to push somebody that uh, you know that was wanting to getting the entertainment or whatever they want to do, but uh, I don't know, I just I just never did believe in locking anybody out if they had talent. Uh, I know I've, <clears throat> I've had people that were great whistlers even, that uh, would get up real regular and, and whistle, mm -hmm. or whatever they did, you know. If the people liked it, put them up there. 
or give them a chance whether they'd ever heard them or not, you know. Mm -hmm. Because I never did believe in, <clears throat> in one person hogging the show, because you could take you could take Merle Haggard as great as he is and put him up on stage all night and they're going to get tired of it, you know. But if you got some other people that can fill in and uh, give a variety, well, that's the name of the game. There's no, I don't think there's any that I know of, any successful band ever made it where there was only one guy or one girl that did all sing. Because, you know, people just, they get tired of it. Uh, and just, I just believed if they could do something good, let them do it, mm -hmm. you know. Because they might be tomorrow's stars, you know. Right. Um, of all, uh, what was the, oh, who was your favorite musician? that you ever played with or worked with or saw? I guess played with, yeah. Oh, I had a, I had a lot of that I really liked. Uh, it's Cordo. You're talking about singing, yeah. playing, well, or yeah. what? Just, uh, okay, yeah, different categories. Singing, playing, writing, performing. Oh, that's a rough one. Uh, in the country field, I would say, <clears throat> I'd say to cover about everything, I would say that, uh, I would say Merle, Buck, and Marty Robbins just about cover everything. Of course, I like a lot of them, you know, yeah. but if I had to, to pick as far as writing ability and and, and different styles. Uh, if I was picking them, I'd pick uh, in the country field now. I've got a lot of favorites in other yeah. fields. I would say uh, I would say Merle, Buck, and Marty Robbins is my three favorites. As far as writing, performing, and, and you know. Um, okay, I'm going to just give you a bunch of names of people and tell me, I'm kind of interested in, in character and in wild times too. I mean, it's like, I know this, it, it, it my, I mean, to give you an idea, my, my perspective on this is like, I think people today don't have as much fun and are not as wild. As no way. <laughs> no. And, and, and I just, and, or anything you can tell me, I'll just throw out names. Uh, Wynn Stewart, uh, things you remember about him, playing with him, and little things he did or that were funny or whatever. Well, great singer. That's right. Uh, Did y'all get you some coffee? No. Did you want any? Yeah. Would you like some? <laughs> yeah. Sure? Yeah, I'll get it for you. Sure. Yeah. Thank I'll you. Guess. Yeah, I'll use about two spoons in it, too. Okay. Uh, no. What about you? No, thank you. Ice water? No, I've been working on this iced tea. Okay. You're still working on Carl Jr. I think I'll take ice water if you got it. All right. They know what I'm talking Lynn Stewart, uh, <laughs> uh, I remember at one time, Lynn Stewart was playing down south. <clears throat> And all the, most of the musicians around here were uh, Douglas, uh, singing and entertaining. He was uh, probably at one time uh, the hottest artist on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And at that time he was recording, it uh, wasn't on a major label at that time. Challenge? Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, then he, uh, that was Gene Autry's label. And uh, when he just fun loving guy, you know, yeah. I, I didn't know I didn't know when I, I never ran around with him or anything. That's a real coffee head. But uh, uh, you might get a dance dig. But uh, okay. him and Harlan Howard, I guess one of the greatest songwriters. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
his wife at that time. What was her name? Jan? Yeah, Jan Howard, yeah. Jan. Yeah. Uh, they used to come down with women and uh, they had uh, come down to Blackboard just to visit us, you yeah. know, stand around and, you know. There was no, there was no formal thing. We just, you just come kind of listen. We didn't dress fancy or anything. We just got up and did our thing. And when we got through, we'd lay our old Fender guitars right in the middle of the floor and go home. <laughs> <laughs> now they're worth about two or three thousand dollars a piece. <laughs> you remember yeah, you Telecasters? Around on. <laughs> and Telecasters. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, Tom Collins. Tommy, uh, <clears throat> his name, real name, Leonard Saps. You knew that. Yeah, Henry told me that story. Okay. He, uh, his first records were put out on a small label. Uh, <clears throat> his first record, I believe, was called, let's see, it was going to be Smooth Sailor in Oklahoma City. <clears throat> and, uh, I bet him, uh, I was playing with at Capitol, and Tommy Collins had got in touch with Tommy Duncan, and that's when I met Tommy Collins. And uh, I'd met Wanda Jackson uh, probably a year before then, I think she was. 16 years old or something <clears throat> and uh, her dad was a barber and he brought her out here they had she had an uncle an aunt that lived down there at Mercy Hospital and uh, I had a friend that was an artist you could sit here and do you at all or anything and, and uh, wasn't Bobby Austin, was it? No, no I, <laughs> I knew Bobby too. Great artist, and uh, uh, so I took her and her dad out to this friend of mine's house, and she had her had her new Martin guitar, yeah. and so he painted a painted a star, a black star on her Martin, and wrote her name across there. Wow! Wow! Wanted, yeah. And uh, of course, she went gospel now, you know. Yeah. And she had several hits. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Tom, do you remember any stories about Tommy Collins or? Yeah, some of them I can tell. Some of them I can't. <laughs> tell them all. And, uh, you know, just, you know, like high on a hilltop. I mean, that to me is like a quintessential Bakersfield sound. I know, I've heard. It really is. Heard. I played fiddle on that. Really? Mm -hmm. That's a great song. That's true to life. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tommy was just, he was just funny. He lived with Ferlin Husky, and you know what, a, uh, Ferlin Husky, about one of the best showmen I ever saw, and he's funny all the time. Yeah. I used to run around with him, and Tommy would drive around during the day. Man, I'm telling you. <laughs> Make you turn on just around me. Yeah. <laughs> one time. This is Don Savage who this, this time. <clears throat> he was driving down there on trucks and, <clears throat> and the police department was there, so we were driving around there and I got in front of the police department and I made a hooker just wide open right in front of it. <laughs> and uh, sure enough I didn't get a block away, I got a ticket. <laughs> And uh, yeah, of course they all knew us. It was on TV, you know. Yeah. You could almost not that I was in too much stuff, but you could almost get by with anything, you know, as long as it was within. So this cop asked me, he said, "Well, how come you did that?" And I said, "Well, I didn't know you was looking." <laughs> <laughs> and then another time, old Don Savage was with me, and down on the circle, mm -hmm. I was coming down from the blackboard. Real fast, now. 
instead of going around the circle this way, I went around this way. <laughs> Hold on. Another time, old Lord Whaley, you know old Lord Whaley? Yeah. You know, he has a thing for cops' uniforms and stuff like that. He's in the reserves and stuff like that. So I took him down. This is when I was crazy, you know. <laughs> There's a uniform place in L.A. And he went in. I went in with him. He ordered some uniform. And so on the way home, you know how that traffic is. I used to love driving that freeway. <laughs> and I'd, I'd drive and do it. About like, you know, these race cars, they, they draft right on each other's tail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we come out of one of the freeways, and I always had one of the big cars, you know. Yeah. And I just breathing down this old boy's rear bumper just like this. And I pull up just close to get Don sitting over here. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, just before I scraped it, I whipped it around, and he jumped right in the lap. <laughs> He'll tell you about it. <laughs> I mean, not Don, Lord. Yeah. Lord, this time. Yeah, right, right. And another time I went by, I used to go get him to go have coffee once in a while, you know. So he always dressed pretty nice, you know. What is that? You guys go back with a boat going fishing. Yeah. My car is out there behind your van. Oh, it ain't nobody's way. No. Oh, that's somebody. Anyway, uh, uh, Lord, <clears throat> this has nothing to do with the music business, but I'd go by and I'd call him real early in the morning a lot of times. His, Judy would take the damn phone and throw it in the closet. <laughs> She'd work late at night. So. <laughs> but anyway, I picked him up this particular morning. I haunt him. Here he come with a hot cup of coffee in his hand. He set it right up on my dash. I didn't even think, see. So he reared back and I took off. That <laughs> coffee. coffee hit him right here. <laughs> Man, he screamed for half a mile. <laughs> what the hell you want? He may will forget that. You ask him about it. I bet he will. <laughs> so you don't remember any more stories about Tommy Collins? Like just wild, wildness or being real? I mean, to me, he sounds like the most real person I've ever heard. He is. And, he's, and he sounds very funny. Yeah, I'm in for, Well, they're... Just funny, man. Yeah. Even to talk to him, yeah. husking him yeah. a lot of that. Uh, I don't, I don't hardly know. Uh, You're just fun to be around. For the most yeah, part. you yeah. just you look happy, forward to it. Happy go lucky, and he's yeah. always a witty. Yeah. You know, he's a scientist for trade. You know. He was a what? Scientist for the oil company. Oh, I didn't know oh, that. Yeah, he's a he's a college graduate and everything. Wow. Very smart. Witty. <laughs> All you gotta do is listen to his records. They're, they're oh, funny yeah. as hell. I mean, mm -hmm. they're not half as funny as he is. Old Dallas Frazier is another one I got, yeah. I got to mention. Yeah, I, yeah, okay. You know, he's the one that wrote that. Uh, what left him? What left him? What that? You wrote that? I do. I do. Yeah. You know that? Oh, I remember that song. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, he wrote. He wrote that. Uh, he cut it for uh, RCA, but there's a, I believe it was a standard somebody recorded it, and boy, it was a humongous hit. Flowers on the wall? Oh, no. Oh, no. Girl of name, ain't it? Girl of name. Uh, what is it? Hmm. I can't think of nothing unless I know ahead of time. And I, uh, anyway, he's, he's. He's a multi-millionaire off of that song. Mm -hmm. I've seen, I saw a whole album by Connie Just like Wells. Yeah, yeah. He was a little bit old skinny <laughs> thing when he started. He used to use that scarf. Like I remember the first day. record he kept the capital. Uh, <clears throat> it's called Love Life at 14. <laughs> Love Life at 14. <laughs> Last time I saw him before he gained all this weight. Elvira. Elba. That's uh, right. the Oak, Oak Ridge boys did that too. Yeah, right? yeah. You, you, you sang that, don't you? I uh, used to. I ain't done it in years. I thought you did. Bobby wrote, I could sit here all day and look, name songs you wrote. There goes my everything. Yeah. Any stories about Dallas? 
<laughs> Radiator Man from Moscow. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he was? No. <laughs> Is that a song? Yeah, Tommy wrote that, didn't he? I'm a radiator man from Moscow. Yeah. Well, I gotta get that. Yeah. <laughs> it's Merle on one of Merle's albums. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Dallas, uh, Dallas, when he was around here, was pretty young. He uh, pretty good. He lived with Perlin, Perlin, uh, and Tommy. Yeah, at different oh, times. Oh, and then cousin Herb, when Perlin went back to Nashville, uh, uh, cousin Herb took. Uh, Dallas, he had some sons about his age and studied at school. So. Yeah. Uh, with the with the Brumleys would be part of that core group. Also. Al Brumley, yeah, yeah. yeah he yeah. mentioned him that Al Brumley was on our TV show with us. Yeah. Uh, and he eventually left here after a while, didn't he? He's oh, he's in Branson now. Yeah. Yeah, he was here a long time. A long time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Uh, Bobby Austin, uh, th I've heard Henry's told me there was a, uh, a, a beautiful mural at the blackboard. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the barrel house. The barrel house. Barrel the barrel house. house. Okay. Yeah, he did. All the way around the wall. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He is the one. He done it. Yeah. yeah. In fact, we got some of it in our museum if we ever get it open. <laughs> Have you? Did, did, oh, yeah. You know the part about the picture of Henry in there? <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah. Have... I heard something about it. He was standing up. Take a look. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's all there. Uh, Thanks. Uh, uh, okay. Oh Bobby, uh, see what was that? I heard Bobby was real high spirited. A friend of mine. Uh, well, yeah. Called me from uh, down south. What's the name of that town where the patio pizza was? What, what? Patio Pizza down south. I didn't know it. When they had that uh, uh, colored guy's trial at. Uh, oh, Rodney? Yeah. King? The, the, where they had the jury trial over, named that little old town. Simi Valley? Yeah. A friend of mine lives over there. And he called me in a, <clears throat> and uh, he's in touch with Bobby Austin all the time. Uh, but I'll tell you, Bobby Austin cut one of the best. One of the best country records that I ever heard that it was on that same label that the Capitol. Oh, 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 Challenge. 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 Which uh, record? Uh, something like that. Not apartment number nine, but that's not what we mean. Oh, yeah. No, it was. Uh, oh, that. Something baby. Uh, uh, Chinese or Japanese or something? I keep wanting to say Filipino. Thing. Yeah, I do too. It ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't it. Uh, ah, darn. It was a good song. I can't think of oh, it. Oh, man. You don't, you don't have a copy of it by any chance, do you? I might have. I don't know. I got a garage for it. Uh, Polynesian Baby. <laughs> Polynesian. That's it. Right. Polynesian Baby. One of the best rec country records I ever heard. He sound just like the old Bakersfield sound. Yeah. He sung hell out of it, too. Boy. And then see what happened guy. to Bobby Austin. It's Buck, you know, Bobby had a style that was kind of sounded like Buck. Mm -hmm. But he he was before Buck. Yeah. And then Buck took over his management and got him on capital. Yeah. And they more or less tried to have him change his style. You know, style singing, which killed him. It took the... They the didn't do it, it. Yeah, they didn't do it purposely, but it took the... His real, true style of singing, yeah. the way. Great singer, man. And, uh, and apartment number nine. Yeah. The, uh, it, well, Buck started as a, as a, I know when he was a capital, he was playing session. He played guitar in some of the early oh, records. Oh, yeah, he started oh. playing sessions with us. Yeah. Uh, Gene, somebody, he played that rock and roll singer? Gene, what was his name? Oh, I don't know who he's uh, he's rock and roll. Yeah. Well, he played, you know, he played lead guitar on uh, Tommy's record. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's how he started. You're right. Yeah, at Capitol. Yeah. Anyway, you know, that's right. I read that. Yeah. I put a little lick on her Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pearl and Husky set that style uh, on the guitar. Yeah. And Buck, <clears throat> uh, when we first started playing with Tommy, like, uh, uh, 
see. Like you gotta have a license. You better uh, not do that. You better, yeah. Well, Buck, right in there, Buck took over picking it. Buck was a little bit fancier with licks. Yeah. Pearl and Husky, the original style on Tommy's records was Pearl and Husky on guitar. Mm -hmm. He played thumb picks. Mm -hmm. But it was the same style, only when Buck took over, he, he uh, sharpened it up and made it a little bit. Yeah, I made it a little faster. Mm -hmm. and uh, But uh, anyway, uh, I played fiddle on a lot of uh, <coughs> Furla stuff, and then Jelly Sanders uh, went to work with us, and he started playing fiddle, and I was playing bass. Mm -hmm. I switched over on bass. But I played uh, fiddle on got to have a license. I only had a top. And I played the fiddle on several of Furlan's, like Eli, Eli the Campbell, or Simon Crumb stuff. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Simon Crumb, yeah. That's that other voice that Furlan had. Yeah. Terry Preston, Furlan, yeah. you know, all sang. You know. He was the same artist or just under yeah. different names? Same yeah. artist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, three different his real names. name was Furlan Husky, but he went as Terry Preston, mm -hmm. and his sidekick was Simon Crumb. Okay. Funny voice. He's in his sandy voice. He's <laughs> third, third yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, when when he had uh, uh, Snow White Dove, that was that out of Nashville or out of here? Nashville. Nashville. Yeah, Nashville. Yeah. That was at his first grid. Well, the first big record that he had was with Gene Shepherd called Dear John Letter. Yeah, I got that. Okay. And uh, you got the record? Yeah. Forty five. I, I have. Well, I don't have the forty five. I have a CD. It's on a collection. Oh. Rhino just issued a collection that. that yeah. yeah. On the 45, it says down there at Bill Woods Orchestra. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Four Bees Mad Orchestra. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> and also Dear John Letter, yeah. Satisfied Mind. Yeah. Dear John Letter. Wow. I haven't got a one of them. Wow. Uh, I can make a copy of it if you want. Oh, I, that'd be all right if you yeah. good time. Yeah. I'm trying. To, oh, another guy we're forgetting is Bud Hobbs. Mm -hmm. Bud Hobbs. He cut for years on MGM, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he had a lot of hits when he was up north. Yeah. And he moved to Bakersfield. So he and him run around together. He's wild. You talk about somebody's wild. Mm -hmm. How wild was he? Pretty wild. He was wild. <laughs> they tell me. I wasn't here. <laughs> well, what did he do? Everything. <laughs> a lot of things. One night, I had this little club out on Union Avenue, and he was always about half loaded. He drank, you know, had four dope, came pop. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he, the place is full. He walked in one night, and actually, one Certain people enter a certain way, and everybody's eyes look at him, you know, because he looked like a wild man. And uh, so I was on the mic doing something. I said, Hey, where'd you get that good looking shirt, you know? And he just walked right up to the bandstand and did a strip right there, he pulled the shirt off, <laughs> pulled the shirt off, and made me take it. And he stayed there all night and left without a shirt. Did he take his pants off too, or just his shirt? Oh, he tried to, and I wouldn't let him. <laughs> He didn't <laughs> care. <laughs> That's crazy, thing. I, I heard one story. Henry told me a story about about Bobby Austin that you know that was with the uh, with the ice machine. Oh yeah. Where was that? That on the yeah. He's over at the, the Silver Dollar in Vegas. And I went in one night to go and see him. You know, here come Bobby. Hey, Henry, don't order nothing with the ice. I just pissed him out. He did, dude. I'll tell you, I'll tell you one about as good as that. Uh, <clears throat> oh yeah, I mentioned Roy Nichols in there. Yeah, we'll get to him. I got to get him. Speaking of Roy Nichols, <clears throat> is this ain't no? Is still on? Yeah. Oh, don't worry. I'm watching like a hawk. <coughs> Yeah, a cousin Herb was having a private get-together all over his house, you know, and uh, out on the front lawn, 
and he had some guy catering, you know, drinks. And of course, I didn't, I didn't drink myself, but everybody, they had seven up and everything, whiskey, everything. And Roy was loaded. I don't know whether it was what it was, whiskey or beer or what, but the wise, the wise, that's 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 my baby there. That's baby. That's Amy. Hi, Amy. <laughs> she gone. Uh, and the the wives was all there, sitting around this deal. And uh, old Rod Nichols was, he was really, I, I guess he drank a fifth or whatever he had. I don't know what was. Wiped out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so after a while, he got up. He just took his time, just eased up to the. The bar, little old bar, you know, portable bar, and full of ice, about like you selling. Mm-hmm. He walked up there and he sat there, stood there, and looked up and down there. And after a while, he unzipped. He didn't know where he was. He unzipped his pants and he just completely, almost melted all the ice. <laughs> and then, <coughs> old Herb, he just rolled and laughed. That's all he did. So later on, this Lewis and Fuzzy, a bunch of us went in. Uh, his Herb had a big, him and, and uh, Catherine had a big bedroom in there. So we sat on the edge of the bed talking and <clears throat> shooting the bull. So old uh, Herb winked at us and he walked over on the dresser. And he got a, a great big old pill about that big, black or dark pill. Mm-hmm. And he walked, he winked at everybody, walked over, handed it to Roy, and Roy, oh. <laughs> and you know what it was? Birth control. Birth control. <laughs> <laughs> Never did, did he get it? We was all in the middle of four, man. He didn't care. I heard finally told him after she quit laughing. <laughs> Mark, he didn't know that